Right, hello, welcome back to another video. Uh, today I'm going to be carrying on a little bit from where we left off last time, uh, talking about UVs. Um, just a couple of little techniques where we can use our UVs more for how we might use it for VFX meshes. So, um, more about how things are going to be animated um, rather than getting kind of pixel perfect uh, unwraps. Um, so, starting here with our basic plane. Um, Nothing special about this, simple plane, uh, and all I've done is I've just animated this material here in Maya um, to move, so it's just a scrolling thing. Uh, a technique we use all the time in, in VFX, uh, just moving textures across uh, across geometry. Um, works really well, fine, we're not getting any distortion, um, which is what we want some of the time, but actually we can use this idea of distortion to our advantage. So if I just uh, unhide the other plane, um, here, same plane, same geometry. You can see in the wireframe hasn't changed at all. Um, but what I've done is I've just taken these UVs and compressed some of them, and then spread out some of them. If I press play, what you can see is because the different mesh widths here are the same, but the different UV widths are now different. Um, the wider the UV is, the quicker. Around the wider it is, the slower um, the material appears to be moving along that. So um, really nice for things like waterfalls, and um, you don't want to make different materials for falling water, bits of fast, bits of slow. Um, you can very quickly just take that UV, um, if I pause it so I can edit it, um, and spread that out. So you can see here, really spread out. It's a big gap, big distance between these two uh, edge loops. It's going to have a lot of, of, of detail in between them a lot of information, it's going to take a long time to scroll that, so it's going to appear to be slowly moving here. Um, really nice, really powerful uh, technique. Um, cool, so moving on, something like this, like a, a cylinder top. Um, it's projected, it's, it's unwrapped, it's got no distortion. If you were painting this uh, with kind of, I don't know, some kind of texture, um, that would be fine, that would be great exactly what you want for that but again if we're talking about this sort of scrolling techniques um, scrolling materials if I scroll this uh, this isn't set up to do that let's just put it on material 2 um, if I press play it's just going to be panning across that cylinder top that's fine if that's what you want maybe it is um, but actually this mesh shape obviously is, is sort of circular we want things to scroll outwards or around quite often this might be like a whirlwind spin that kind of thing, or a radial burst, it's more likely we want this to be UV'd in a different way. So here it is, um, UV'd each of those faces uh, into a uh, into the square, into a single single square. This is really useful. This gives a lot of, of uh, power. Um, if we select sort of our top edge, we could have a gradient up here. That's going to be a gradient around the middle. So we've got access to both of these things. And as long as we're using a tiling texture through the middle. Uh, we can tile that lots of times in uh, in Unreal, in our material, um, and you'll end up with a much nicer, or much more useful uh, unwrapped mesh. Um, if I go into my movement, let's just go into the material. This one's not set up to animate, but I can do that in here manually. So you can see if I change that offset, that's going to be moving radially one way, and then change the other one, that's going to be moving in and out much more useful um, and there's some distortion I mean there definitely is you can see here the sort of the checkerboard fight up the number of repeats on this um, you are definitely getting some distortion um, the size of your face really makes a difference so here this is a big uh, it's quite long the aspect ratio um, it's quite a wide face for how long it is um, if we go in and add some edge loops to this, you can see hopefully we're starting to reduce that amount of distortion. It's never going to be perfect. Obviously, we've got a an unwrap um, that isn't pixel perfect. It's not doing that sort of minimizing distortion. It's more how, uh, how we need it to be to set up our animated material correctly. Um, but you can see hopefully that's really reduced that that distortion down. The more geometry you have, the better uh, that's going to be. Um, but obviously, there's a limit in things like poly counts. They cost some performance and things. So, um, yeah, really useful again. Much more um, applicable for sort of a game VFX uh, uh, unwrap. Um, so finally, 
looking again here, same principle, rather than being a, a continuous disk, um, it's a, a strip of polys. I want this to be animated so that it kind of like has the animation along the strip. That's going to be more useful, um, used all the time in kind of magical effects, that kind of thing. All the control of the 3D mesh um, and all the material animation. So how do we do this? There's a really nice little technique for this. Um, if I look at my UVs now, it's just a simple automatic unwrap. Um, they're not arranged how we want at all. If I just sew them together, take this up edge and sew, move and sew. That's the wrong edge, that's the one that's open. Here we go, move and sew. Obviously that's not really giving us what we want. I want this to be so completely straight and in the UV square. So what I'm going to do, firstly, select all my edges and just cut them. Just do a cut so that they're all individual faces. And now if I select them as individual UV shells, there's a tool we have here that's called Unitize. And what that will do will take every single face and assign it to the full UV square. And now it's just a case of taking those edges. And we can do two edge ring. Ooh, not split, just two edge ring. And then move and sew. And we've got really nice, perfectly square, uniform unwrap. Um, finally, this is way too big. Um, we want this to be split into our, uh, our sort of positions in our zero to one space. Um, depending on what material, depending on what you're doing with it, but generally it's easier to start with your UVs in your zero to one space. And if you have multiple tiling, if you want your texture to repeat across that, do that in the material. So, so yeah, we just normalize. Normalize will just take whatever shape shell you've got and put it in the zero to one, or put it into a zero to one square, and then you might then have to position it into the space. Um, and then hopefully, if I've done this correctly, it will be scrolling. Well, okay, it's scrolling the wrong direction. Very simple to do. Uh, we just rotate our UVs. Don't need to change our material. Transform, rotate, snap that. There we go. And now we've got things nice scrolling along the length of that mesh. So, um, yeah, just a couple of little um, tips and tricks for this. Um, it is definitely worth thinking about how you can use your UVs. A, how you need them to be set up for your material, um, keeping them within zero to one square, what advantages you get to be able to go in and now kind of like paint a gradient top and bottom. That's going to match that perfectly. Um, and then yes, how we can distort them. And we could do the same thing in here. So if we had this scrolling, whichever way it would be, let's add it material. So that's scrolling that way. So I change my UVs that way, now it's going to scroll outwards and I can take that last ring and I can do that same principle of, sort of stretching these out to make it appear faster and slower so um, not the most complicated material in the world obviously it's just a, a panning checkerboard noise um, but just by changing those UVs into a few different kind of configurations we can create what's really some quite interesting complex motion hopefully so hopefully that's been helpful um, as always uh, if you can like comment subscribe if you have any questions do let me know um, and if you do enjoy these videos and you want me to keep doing them um, I've set up a patreon so you can kind of make some donations to me there um, cool and I will see you all next time